Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about another add-on which I recommend that you put in on your system with uh, Blender Fluid Designer for 3D printing and it's a Celtic Knot Curve add-on which adds curves to meshes and uh, you can find this add-on if you go to uh, Google and if you Google Blender Celtic Knot uh, you'll find that you uh, get a link to GitHub Boris the Brave is the one that you're looking for. It's the Boris the Brave Celtic Knot add-on. And you can download that and install it in Blender in the usual way. So uh, if you go to Blender and uh, once you've installed it, you'll find that there's a, uh, an item in your curve menu called Celtic Knot from Mesh. Now we've got to add a mesh first of all to use this. So if I add a simple cube, and just scale it up a little bit and apply the scale. Um, so we've got a cube there. Now with the cube highlighted, if you just go to Add Curve and Celtic Knot from Mesh, it will draw a Celtic Knot on the outside of that cube. Now at this point you could actually delete the cube. You don't need that anymore. So there's the, the Celtic Knot. And uh, to add some substance to that in 3D templates, section folder um, I would add uh, I'm going to use a, a rectangular cross-section bevel object and uh, just click OK and just click outside the box so it puts that object in the middle of the screen now that object in the properties panel is a bevel object of just one by one millimeter so that's the default size of it and so if I select my Celtic knot and uh, select the bevel object the rectangular bevel object, it'll just uh, add some substance to my Celtic knot curve. Now when I zoom in on this, the overlap I'm not that keen on. Um, it's not quite that smooth where they overlap. And that's because this is a Bezier curve at the moment. So if I press the tab key and go into edit mode, let me just uh, switch on screencast keys for you. I should have done that before. If I press the tab key and go into edit mode and press A to select all the control points and press the space bar and type set spline type, I can change the spline type from Bezier to NURBS. And when I do that, it will change in size, but that's not a problem. But what it will do is it smooths up those intersections and I think that's much, much neater. So change it from a Bezier kind to a NURBS type. Now, the file, uh, the face uh, file size will be a bit higher, but I think it just does look a much better. So if you look at that from the front, you can see that that's the pattern that you get. Now, if you wanted to change this into, for example, an earring, uh, if uh, if I go into uh, edit mode and uh, highlight all of those control points uh, with A on the keyboard, I could scale this in the Y dimension, so I could stretch it out, so it's now like the grid, it's about 20 millimeters. Um, if I press A to deselect those points and B for a border select, I can just select some control points at the top. And I'm just gonna switch the snap off and switch proportional editing on. And if I do S for scale now, um, I can adjust my proportional editing box but what I'm doing is just squeezing it in tight at the top there all right so um, when I come out of edit mode there's my object now now all I need to do to make that into an earring is if I just view that from the top um, if I go to object library and go to jewelry findings for earrings I tend to use this first one with an internal diameter of one and a half millimeter and so if I just put that there I mean, obviously, I, I really ought to reposition it accurately, but essentially, um, if I export that as an OBJ file, that will print as an earring. Okay, so um, that's how easy it is to uh, create some sort of uh, 3D printable object in Fluid Designer with this um, add on. So if I go to view and top view now, I've just deleted that one. Um, if I start off with a different mesh object, so I'm going to start off with a cylinder here. Now, the important thing to understand about a cylinder is if I just uh, go into edit mode 
there are a lot of faces in fact there are 32 faces around here I think it's 32 which is too many for when you add a bevel object so I'm going to delete that when I, what I recommend is when you do this so if I do cylinders change the vertices here down to something like six or seven or eight something quite small so you get that chunkier effect there and if I do that as five millimeters for the radius and I'll do 20 millimeters for the height of it so that's the kind of uh, object that I've got so it's, it is a cylinder but uh, as you can see I've got a small number of faces there now with the cylinder highlighted if I go to add curve and if I do my Celtic knot from a mesh um, when I put a bevel object around this it'll look a lot better but before I do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the remesh type over here to edge subdivide and uh, if I just delete my cylinder now uh, you can see I get that effect and if I just open up my properties panel and add my bevel object you can see that that's what I end up with now again I, I don't think that's quite as nice as it could be so if I go into edit mode and highlight all those control points now this is currently a bezier curve and again if I press the space bar and set spline type and change it to nerves I get a much nicer smoother um, tidier object there symmetrical so again you know I could change this into an earring again like I did before so uh, border select highlight the control points at the top my proportional editing's on so if i just scale that i could uh, scale the top down like i did with the other object and um, if i rotate it about the x-axis i think probably minus 90 and then just position that ring more carefully that again would uh, 3d print now the nice thing about this is at the bottom there I've got a nice circle so if you've got dual craft on your system you could actually add a gem and fit the gem at the bottom there and put some prongs uh, and that could be a say it could be an earring uh, with uh, a gem at the bottom alternatively if you just go into edit mode and highlight all those control points and if you just scale it in the y direction you could bring this right down and this could now fit on the top of a ring and you could put a round gem in there so if I go to uh, view and top view if I uh, go back to my outliner if I go to my object library if I go to rings jewelry rings and if I just scroll down <coughs> I'll show you what I mean um, so I'm just looking for UK size P plus ring my system runs a bit slow at loading these graphics it's only a, an old thing so I'm just going to uh, select a ring UKP plus click OK just to click outside the box so that centers it nicely now if I just go to um, 3d templates bevel objects and uh, I want to there's a special bevel object here for rings so I'm going to use a, a rectangular one and click OK and again click outside the box and so what I can do is I've got uh, instead of the using the default ring size that comes there I can use this bevel object ring cross section so that will give me a ring there and uh, if I rotate that now 180 degrees and just push it up there you can see that there's a kind of cage now for, uh, on the top of the ring and also if I select the ring and uh, the tab key and go into edit mode and just select that one control point at the top there and if I open up the transform panel I can change the radius there and so put on a bit of extra uh, sorry a bit of extra thickness so I'm going to just type 4.5 and then come out of edit mode and just reposition my uh, cage at the top there and it's nice and round there so as I say if you've got dual craft you could put a, a gem there depending upon the size of the gem you could resize that um, and, and you've then got a, a 3d printable ring because this is basically uh, these are all curves and you'll have no problem as long as you run it through netbevel 
So that's how you can use that curve add-on which we recommend you put on your system. Thank you.